let's take a look at the basic concept of feedback loops. We'll start by drawing one from scratch. Let's add the birth rate node right here. And the population node right here. Birth rate is in people per year. As the birth rate goes up, so does the population. So let's represent that relationship. As the population goes up, so does the birth rate because we have more people to bear children. And we have a feedback loop. Let's give it a name. This is the population growth feedback loop. It's a reinforcing loop, so it gets our standard symbol. Now let's see what would happen if we put this loop in a simulation model and ran it. Let's draw a graph right over here to represent what the dynamic behavior of the system would look like. The population would be on the vertical axis with time on the horizontal axis. At the beginning of the simulation run, population would start, say, low. Over time, it would grow about like this. This is the classic curve of exponential growth. This curve follows from this loop because it's a reinforcing loop. As this node increases, so does this, and as it increases, so does that. That's how all reinforcing loops work. They cause continual growth. Of course, if they're running backwards, they cause continual decline, but this one's growing, and that's why we get this classic exponential growth curve. But no curve can grow forever. This is an exponential growth curve driven by a reinforcing loop. The elements of a feedback loop are the nodes and the arrows. If they're connected in such a way that a change in the value of a node ultimately comes back to change the same node in the same direction, then we have a reinforcing loop. If the change is in the opposite direction, we have a balancing loop. To make the behavior of this simple model more realistic, let's add a balancing loop right here. To do this, let's add the carrying capacity node. This is the carrying capacity of the biosphere. As population goes up, if they're behaving unsustainably, then carrying capacity goes down, which is an inverse relationship represented by this dashed arrow. As carrying capacity goes down, so does the population, which is a direct relationship represented by a solid arrow. The name of this loop is overshoot correction. It's a balancing loop, so it gets a little B symbol right here. And then we put a little mini loop around it, and we're done. Now let's add the graph that would happen if we ran the simulation model with the balancing loop in place. We've got the same vertical axis of population same horizontal axis of time. But because of the new carrying capacity node, we've got another new relationship to show on the graph. However, it's a constant. So let's put the 
carrying capacity right here. If the population goes over this limit, it's going to crash. The bigger the overshoot, the bigger the crash. Now, if we ran this simulation model with no delay on the time it takes carrying capacity to be affected by population, then here's about what we're going to get. Population might start low, like on the other graph, and it would start growing exponentially. But then, as it approached the carrying capacity, it would level off and approach it as an asthmatote, about like that. This is the classic S-curve of growth in population as many other areas. But let's make the model a little more realistic. Suppose the delay between the effect of population on capacity and the change in capacity was not zero. Let's add a delay represented by this little symbol here and run the model again. Here's about how it might behave. It would go into overshoot, react, and then start growing again and react again. In other words, it would oscillate. If the carrying capacity never budged, well then the population is going to bobble around it. Due to the delay, it keeps overreacting. Now, let's make the model even more realistic. The carrying capacity never degraded, but in the real problem, the global environmental sustainable problem, it does degrade, that is, it falls. So let's reuse our previous graph. Let's erase this little curve here. And let's add the carrying capacity right here except this time it's degrading, like on the cover of the Limits to Growth book. Now, if we run the simulation model with this balancing loop, here's what's going to happen. Things start out as usual, but we get an overshoot and the population starts to collapse and then it falls. Once it goes below capacity it starts to correct and stays low. This is exactly what the curve on the cover of the Limits to Growth book did. It had deep within the model a population growth loop and an overshoot correction loop which had a delay and an inverse relationship which is what made it a balancing loop. Now let's summarize the basic concept of feedback loops. Feedback loops are of two kinds, reinforcing and balancing. They're a simple tool for capturing the behavior of dynamic systems. If you capture this behavior correctly, then as the model grows, such as this very simple model, so does its explanatory and predictive power, as shown in these graphs. This explanatory and predictive power soon passes the capability of the human mind, which means that the model can explain and predict things that the unaided mind, mind could never hope to handle alone. This, of course, is why modeling is a required tool for solving incredibly difficult, complex social system problems such as the sustainability problem.